it's time for us to go through another chapter of the book, Ask and It is Given. So, today we are going to study chapter, no, not chapter, process number 12. And process number 12 is called, Wouldn't It Be Nice If? Again, this process is very similar to what we did last night with process number 13 because the, the reason they are similar is because both of them are about our self-talk. Both of them are about what's going on in here. Okay, so let's first uh, take a look at what Abraham is recommending. When you find yourself, so when to use this process, use it when you find yourself leaning towards the negative and therefore offering resistance. And you want to turn it around to something more positive. When you are already feeling good and you want to focus more specifically on certain areas of your life to make them even better. When you want to gently guide a negative or potentially negative conversation to a more positive place for your benefit or to gently guide someone else. So the current emotional set point range for this process is from 4 all the way to 16. The previous one was 4 all the way to 17. So they're not very different from each other. Okay? All right, so here's where Abraham is explaining how this works. When you use the words, I want this thing, usually even though you don't say it with aloud or you don't, um, you don't express it, but as soon as you say, I want this thing, in the very next breath, a lot of us say, but I don't have it. Where is it? When is it going to happen for me? And when you do that, you're going negative. So an easier or softer way of doing it, which keeps you from going negative and yet you're still asking, is the phrase, wouldn't it be nice if? Wouldn't it be nice if it happened? So there's less attachment in this than there would be if, if you were saying things like, where is it? When is it going to happen? Wouldn't it be nice if this happened? That means I'll be really happy if it happens, but if it doesn't happen, it's not going to destroy me. That's okay if it doesn't happen. And when you accept that, that reduces attachment to the outcome. And when you don't have attachment to the outcome, that brings whatever it is that you want, it brings it closer. All right, so let's read what Abraham says about this. Abraham says, when you say, I want this thing to happen that hasn't happened yet, you're not only activating the vibration of your desire, but you're also activating a vibration of the absence of your desire. So you're pulling on both sides. Remember the stick that we were looking at? This, which is really my bookmark. Um, every subject is, has two perspectives, the side of having it and the side of not having it. And that's really what Abraham is saying. When you say the words, I want this thing to happen, you're focused here. And then in the same breath, you say, that hasn't happened yet. You're focused here. So now you've given this your energy and you've given this your energy. If you give both sides of the equation your energy, you're pulling onto both sides. And that's what stress is all about. Because if something is being pulled at both ends, in the end, it's going to break. And that is what happens to people who develop health problems because of the stress that they are under. But when you say, wouldn't it be nice if this desire would come to me, you achieve a different sort of expectation that is much less resistant in nature. The wouldn't it be nice if process will help you let in things that you have been asking for on all subjects. Wouldn't it be nice if we had the best time we've ever had with these friends? Wouldn't it be nice if the traffic light um, 
traffic is light and we have a wonderful trip. Wouldn't it be nice if I had a really productive day at work? Those are all really good feeling. When you say them, it feels good rather than saying, oh my God, I've got so much work waiting for me when I get to the office, right? Now, that's the side of, uh, that's the negative side of the equation. Positive side of the equation is, wouldn't it be nice if I had a really productive day? Wouldn't it be nice if I find the most spectacular partner who adores me in the same way that I adore them? Wouldn't it be nice if I find someone and we waltz off into the sunset together? Wouldn't it be nice if there's somebody out there who's looking for somebody just like me? See, those are ways of saying the same thing, but with very little attachment or no attachment at all, because you're being playful. It's like saying, wouldn't it be nice? It's just like saying, um, knock, knock, who's there, right? It's playful. And when you're playful, you don't take things so seriously, then you don't create attachment to the outcome. And when you don't create attachment to the outcome, then things happen really, really quickly for you. All right. So, the uh, wouldn't, be, wouldn't it be nice if game is so important and so powerful because when you say wouldn't it be nice, you are choosing something that you want and you're being soft and easy about it. In other words, it is not the end of the world. It is a much softer vibration. For example, let us say you want to reduce your body weight. Here's a wouldn't it be nice if example for you. And I like this example, so I'm going to read it out to you. Wouldn't it be nice if I stumbled onto something that really worked for me? Wouldn't it be nice if my metabolism began to cooperate with me a little more? Wouldn't it be nice if the desires that I've been holding for a long time sort of come to a peak like a guiding light? Wouldn't it be nice if I could meet someone who's just run across something that really worked for them, which they which would light a fire in me? Wouldn't it be nice if I could reclaim the body weight I had when I was such and such an age? Wouldn't it be nice if I looked like I did in this picture? See, you're still asking, you're still focused on what you desire, but it's a much lighter, happier, less attachment way of doing the same thing. And then Abraham keeps going with the example um, hang on one second. So they say, your logic would tell you, hey, I've been at this for a very long time. If I knew how to do it or if I was good at it, I'd have already gotten it done. So you're contradicting your own desire. And so you would hold yourself in that vibration of contradiction. Contradiction, doubt, those are the things that create a wobble in our vibration because we are not steady. We are wobbling from side to side. So when we are playful and we say, wouldn't it be nice if much of that wobble is gone and you're more steady in your vibration. So Abraham continues the example by saying, wouldn't it be nice if my physical body came into alignment with my dream? Wouldn't it be nice if I discovered this to be Sorry, wouldn't it be nice if I came into energy alignment and everything around me came into vibrational harmony with that? Wouldn't it be nice if the cells of my body cooperate with the mental picture that I'm holding? Wouldn't it be nice if I could feel ease about my body? Wouldn't it be nice if my physical body began responding differently to food? Wouldn't it be nice if I began feeling a greater inspiration to exercise? Wouldn't it be nice if the food burning characteristics of my body kicked into high gear and this process turned into an easy, almost effortless scenario? Wouldn't it be nice if my ideas about food came into alignment so that I find myself taking such pleasure from foods that are really in vibrational harmony with what my body wants and needs? See, if you read these statements, it feels really, really good. And you can write statements like this 
on any subject of your life, whether it be money or relationships, you can do this for anything. So then Abraham says, one more thing, do not expect instant results. Know that it is coming into being in its perfect time. In other words, you've been encouraging through your thought and behavior a cellular community, a large part of which you are about to extinguish. <laughs> I like that. And so there's some cellular cooperation that is going to take place and all cells are willing to cooperate. They are not sacrificing. They are not holding little cellular funerals in advance. There is no mourning going on as in, ah, she's going to kill 25% of us. I thought that was funny. Okay, so see how you can do the process for anything that you want to do it for. Wouldn't it be nice if I could pay all my bills really easily this month? Wouldn't it be nice if I was able to find a new job that was perfect for me? Wouldn't it be nice if that person was nicer to me the next time we meet. Wouldn't it be nice if I could travel the world and see all the things that I want to see? Wouldn't it be nice if I could hear from that friend that I haven't heard from for such a long time? Wouldn't it be nice if they called me for an interview, right? All these things, saying it just a little bit differently. Wouldn't it be nice if the food that I'm cooking just now turns out absolutely magnificent? Wouldn't it be nice if? So instead of saying, I want this, try saying, wouldn't it be nice if this came to me? Instead of saying, this hasn't happened for such a long time, try saying, wouldn't it be nice if it happened quickly? Wouldn't it be nice if it reduces the resistance in anything and everything that we talk about? And that is the power of these words. So I want you to remember these words really, really well because they do make an ex a huge difference in the way you start talking to yourself and in the way that you start expressing um, whatever it is that you, you are thinking. You, you use these words to preface everything that you're thinking about and everything that you're saying. Wouldn't it be nice if? Wouldn't it be nice if this happens? Wouldn't it be nice if? And that is really, really powerful because that little change that you do has the capacity to completely revamp your vibration and take you up the emotional scale. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. So folks, this is a shorter chapter than the other chapters and I don't feel that there's very much more for me to add to it. So I'm going to say good night for today and be back with you with another process from the book Ask and It Is Given tomorrow. But I can tell you for sure these words, the last chapter or process and this chapter combined if you can start putting into action these two, your whole thinking process is going to change. If there was a way to change our thoughts so that we become more positive thinking people, this, my friends, is it. The beauty of it is, after a while, it becomes your second nature and you don't have to think about it. It just becomes the way you think. And there's power in that. So I hope that you will start practicing it right away. And I can tell you that that's exactly what I did. This is, this book, this book is instrumental in changing absolutely the way I live life, the way I think my thoughts and what I teach others to do. Blessings to you all and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.